Welcome to the Crunch McDabble Show. I'm your host, Crunch McDabbles. This is the only show where we design a fantasy RPG character using Pathfinder 2nd Edition rules and then destroy them in our test dungeon. This week, we build a human war priest cleric. Let's see if he can heal his way through the dungeon. First, let's look at the build. Okay, let's build a human warrior cleric. A little build music, please. We start with our ancestry. We choose human. Humans are as unpredictable and varied as any of Galarian's peoples. They have exceptional drive and the capacity to endure and expand. Humans are size medium. They have a 25 foot movement speed and they get eight hit points at level one. For ability boosts, they get two free boosts and they have no flaws. So we have a lot of versatility as a human for our ability choices. For our heritage, we choose Versatile Heritage. This gives us a free general feat at level 1. We will choose the general feat Toughness to get one more hit point per level, because you just never know when you might need one more hit point. Hopefully we don't need it, but if we do, we got it. With our first level Ancestry feat, we choose the feat Natural Ambition. We are raised to be ambitious and always reach for the stars, leading us to progress quickly in our chosen field. This gives us a first level class feat for our class. Our class is Cleric, and the neat thing about this is that usually we wouldn't get a Cleric class feat until level 2, but because we are human and we progress quicker in our chosen field, we get to choose a feat at level 1. With this feat, we're going to choose the class feat Healing Hands. Our positive energy is even more vibrant and restorative. When you cast Heal, you roll D10s instead of D8s. That's great. More healing power with the Heal spell, and we get it a level earlier, because we are a human. For background, we choose Martial Disciple. It says you dedicated yourself to intense training and rigorous study to become a great warrior. The background Martial Disciple gives us an ability boost to either Strength or Dexterity, and a free ability boost. It also gives us a choice of either Athletics or Acrobatics as a skill to be trained in. We choose the skill Acrobatics since we're going to get Athletics skill from our Deity choice. But because we chose Acrobatics as a background skill, we will also gain the skill feat Catfall. Our cat-like aerial acrobatics allows us to cushion falls, so we treat falls as 10 feet shorter. That's great. Finally, because we're a martial disciple, we're trained in the lore skill Warrior Lore. So we'll know a little something about the lore of famous warriors. How cool. Moving on to class. We choose the class Cleric. Shocker. Cleric gets us a plus 2 ability boost to Wisdom, and we get 8 hit points per level plus our Constitution modifier. Clerics choose a deed at first level, and we choose Gorum. Gorum is the god of battle, strength, and weapons. His domains are confidence, destruction, might, and zeal. At first level, Gorum gives us access to the spell True Strike. As for training, clerics are trained in perception. For saving throws, they are trained in fortitude and reflex, but they are expert in will saves. For skills, we are automatically trained in religion. We also are trained in one skill determined by our choice of deity, which for Gorum is athletics. We also get to choose two more skills of our own choice, so we choose the skills medicine and intimidation. For weapons, as a cleric, we are only trained in simple weapons, but we also get to add trained in our deity's favorite weapon, which is the greatsword, so we're trained in that. We are also trained in unarmed attacks, which hopefully we don't have to use those. As a cleric, we are untrained in all armor, which is pretty bad, but we're going to choose the War Priest Doctrine in a little bit, which will give us trained in medium and light armor. For spells, we cast Divine Spells. At first level, we can cast two spells per day. Whenever we rest, we can choose two spells from any first level spells from the Divine Spell List or True Strike from our Deity Spell List. In our case, we're going to prepare the spells Magic Weapon and Heal. Clerics get cantrips, which are low-level spells. The great part about them is they don't use spell slots, so you can cast them as often as you want. We're going to prepare the cantrips Shield, Divine Lance, Light, 
days and detect magic. Our next class feature is Divine Font. Our DD Gorum allows us to choose either heal spells or harm spells. We choose Healing Font, which lets us cast the heal spell an additional number of times per day of 1 plus our Charisma modifier. When we factor in our Charisma, that will be 4 bonus heal spells per day. Our heal spells heal for D10 from our Healing Hands class feat, which was a level 2 class feat that we took at level 1 because we're humans, so we have 5 healing spells per day using D10s for healing. So Divine Font is a pretty great class feature. The next class feature is our Doctrine. We can either be a caster type of cleric called a cloistered cleric or a battle cleric called a war priest. We choose war priest. War priest gives us trained in light and medium armor so we can breathe a sigh of relief that we aren't going into combat without armor. It also increases our fortitude save to expert so we are now expert in both will and fortitude saves. It also gives us the general feat shield block which is a nice feat to have but we won't be using that because we will be using a greatsword, which is two-handed. Next, let's buy some equipment. We're going to spend eight gold on a breastplate for armor. That's a lot of money, but we want to be protected and we want to look like a cool holy warrior, so some plating around the torso is important. Also, we have 16 strength, so we meet the armor strength threshold of 16, so we don't take a penalty on strength and dexterity skill checks or a five feet penalty to movement speed. We'll spend two gold on a greatsword so we can attack things. Finally, we will spend most of the remaining gold on a, a silver holy symbol, a religious text, and an adventurer's pack to hold all of our loot in. And off we go. Our ability scores break down as follows. Our ancestry human gives us two free boosts which we will put into strength and charisma. Our background of Martial Disciple gives us either Strength or Dexterity and a free boost. We choose Strength and we choose Charisma with our free boost. Our class of Cleric gives us an automatic ability boost to Wisdom. Finally, we get our four free boosts which we put into Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, and Charisma. This gives us our final ability score breakdown of 16 Strength, 12 Dexterity, 12 Constitution, 10 Intelligence, 12 Wisdom, and 16 Charisma. Now we can calculate our armor class. We have 4 from the Breastplate, 1 from our Dexterity, and 3 from being trained in medium armor for a total of 18 armor class. That's nearly impenetrable. For hit points we have 8 from Human Ancestry, 8 from our Class Cleric, 1 from Constitution, and 1 from our Toughness feat for a total of 18 hit points. So that's plenty. I basically we can never die. Our saving throws are reflex, three for trained and one for dexterity for four reflex. Fortitude is one from constitution and five from expert training for six fortitude. And our will save is one from wisdom and five from expert training for six will save. So not bad saves at all. For skills we have perception four, acrobatics four, athletics six, intimidation six, warrior lore three, medicine 4 and religion 4. So that's not too bad a skill set for a cleric. Well that's our build finalized and ready to rumble against a goblin horde in the Forgotten Temple. We can heal and we can hit things with our great sword so let's head on over to our test dungeon and breeze through it with this human warrior cleric build. The battle cleric strides confidently down the crumbled steps of the ancient temple now fallen into ruins. Below in the darkness he sees a horde of goblins shuffling around an aged fountain in some raucous game. They turn and erupt into a cacophony of screeches and hoots. Alright, it's time to roll for initiative. Up first, the servant to Gorum, the human battle cleric, his initiative is a uh, Perception score plus four. Here's his d20. He's gonna oh, he's gonna crit that again. Okay, so 24. Uh, then following him, the goblin warriors. They have an initiative of plus two, so they can't even reach him. But they'll uh, roll initiative anyways. 
No, five plus two for seven. There you have it. The battle cleric, the servant of Gorum. He takes a deep breath, anticipating the battle to come. He grips his greatsword and casts a spell. That will take two actions. He's going to cast magic weapon. That will give him a plus one to hit, and it will increase his damage dice. Then he's going to move forward with his third action. One, two, three, four, five. Right into the middle of the room. And the goblin's turn begins. This first goblin, the one that's closest, uh, he he's going to um, first action to pull out his dog slicer. The second action to move up, five, ten, 15 and then 20 so moves forward 20 feet and then with this third attack or th third action he'll take an attack now rolling to hit it's a dog slicer first armor class 18 that's a d20 he gets a plus 8 to hit with that that's 8 plus 4 that's 12 it's gonna miss all right this goblin's gonna go first action he's gonna pull out a dog slicer second action he's gonna move 5 feet 10 feet Another diagonal for 20 feet. Another diagonal for 25 feet. Now, since he ended a move action next to his ally, his ally warrior can take a scuttle move, so he can take a step, so he'll just go there just because he can. And this goblin still has a action left, so he's gonna take an attack with his dog slicer. Okay, here goes, d20 plus eight to hit. 9 plus 8 is going to be 17. That's going to miss. Up next, this goblin way in the back here is going to action 1, pull out a dog slicer. Action 2, move up 5 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet, 25 with his second action. With this third action, he'll just uh, take a step in here to get into combat. And this allows his... Uh, this guy can't take a reaction. He already used his reaction, but this guy, being an ally, is able to scuttle five feet. That is that goblin's turn. And this goblin way in the back up here is going to move up. Five, 10, 20, 25. Pull out his dog slicer for his second action. And with his third action, he'll move up. This guy will be completely flanked. Now five. 15. This will move down to here so everybody's flanking. This hero is now surrounded by a gaggle of goblins. Okay, round two. Cleric Servant Agorum is going to turn. He just doesn't like this guy. And he's going to take a swing with his greatsword, grip it tightly, and try and take this guy's head off. This fella here. Now he does have magic sword cast, so it's actually a plus seven to hit here. First swing is gonna be a d20 plus seven, 12, that's 19, that's gonna hit. The image is gonna be 2d6 plus three. With the magic weapon spell, adds uh, double damage dice. Eight plus three is 11, that will kill that goblin. So this goblin falls dead. He's gonna turn, pivot with his second action. He wants to get rid of this flanking thing that's going on, so he's gonna use his second attack on this goblin. Melee attack plus seven, AC 18. That's gonna be 14, 21 to hit, minus five because it's the second attack, so 16, so that misses. And he may as well just take the third attack at that guy. I can't think of anything else he's going to do with that spell, with that attack. So uh, final attack, kind of the Hail Mary, minus 10. Nine is not going to cut it. All right, the goblins get to go screaming for vengeance over their fallen comrade. This fella here... Gonna take a five foot step and 
that direction, and then we'll take two attacks against a flat-footed foe. Two attacks. First one's at normal, second one's at minus five. Nineteen and a thirteen. Ouch. Nineteen's definitely gonna be twenty-seven. Not a crit. Oh, but he's flat-footed, so it is a crit. So there's 2d6. And then the 13 plus 8 is uh, 21, minus 5 is uh, 16, which is also a hit because flat-footed AC is 16 right now. So we got three hits, and the thing of it is these dog slicers are, um, they have a backstabber quality, which adds an extra damage one damage per hit so there's two hits so two more damage on top of this 3d6 six is first for seven damage plus one is going to be eight damage and then one more d6 one plus five is thir uh, 13 damage so here are the five hit points now this little goblin here He's just going to wail into him with three attacks against a flat-footed foe. Here goes, 3d20s. First one is 13 plus 8, uh, 21. And that's first armor class 16, so that's going to be a big hit. Second one is 19 plus 8 is 27 minus 5 is 22 that's going to be a hit third one is 17 plus 8 is 25 minus 10 is 15 so that misses just misses um wow all right so we got uh, 2d6 plus 2 for the or plus 1 for no for two hits so it's going to be plus 2 for the dog slicers eight and that crushes our hero crushes his dreams car tr crushes the chosen one of gorham and that's all uh, hi -ya. Uh.